So this is our Dodge Viper ACR Final Edition 2010. We purchased this car uh, used in 2011 from the original owner who had uh, bought that from Spring Dodge in Texas. It was special ordered for him. Uh, we found this car on the Viper Club website and what attracted us to it was that it was a final edition model, one of 12 ACRs produced in this uh, livery. And the gentleman that had bought the car obviously kept it in very good condition. It had approximately 1,600 miles on it when we bought it uh, in, I think it was February of 2011. And we obviously we've owned it since. They've tried to keep it up as well. It uh, gets cared for very well. It's seen some track time, but mostly uh, car shows and just uh, enjoying the car on the road. The uh, Viper has always been a dream car for me, and uh, having raised a family, which is first priority, it took some time to get one. What, it, what attracted me to this car was uh, when Dodge, Dodge set the um, record at Nürburgring in, uh, I think it was late 2011, September 2011, uh, Dominic Fehrenbacher, I think, was the record setter at 7 minutes 12 seconds, or 12.13 I think it was, <laughs> so don't quote me on that. But uh, that got the car some more publicity after it was actually out of production for a while. And uh, the ACRs really uh, were a weld style car and obviously it's all purpose built, so the aerodynamics are specific for uh, racing in terms of the downforce it generates. I think it's uh, 1,500 pounds of downforce at 150 miles an hour. Certainly less than the Gen 5 ACR, but for its time, uh, I think it had one of the highest downforce numbers of any production car. Um, the other unique thing about the ACRs is it has the uh, uh, KW suspension, so it's an adjustable suspension, both for uh, height, ride height, as well as um, the dampers are adjustable for rebound. And let's see what else on this car. Obviously it has the carbon fiber splitter in the front, it helps balance out the aerial front to rear. It has the uh, dive planes in the front. Uh, the standard ACR has a single dive plane. You'll notice some people add on a second dive plane. Those are actually from the ACRX models uh, that were made for racing specifically, not for street legal use. Uh, it has the StopTech brakes, which are also unique to the ACR model. Uh, these were uh, a little bit larger rotors uh, that can handle the uh, higher use of uh, track use. And I believe these are pretty much standard on the new Gen 5 Vipers now. I mean, they have a larger carbon fiber brake package on the Gen 5 ACR. But again, for its time, this was uh, a uh, purpose-built track car and uh, had set, uh, I don't remember the number of records at the time. Uh, I'm sure the aficionados will be able to cite those numbers, but it was something like uh, 14 or 13 track records, very similar to what the Gen 5s have done now with the uh, new ACR. Um, we've only done, a, we went to the Chrysler Proving Grounds as part of our uh, Viper Club, our Viper Owners Association, and that was really enjoyable. That's one of the unique things about the uh, Viper Owners Association is it's very close-knit group of people that are very caring for one another, um, but we went there as a, as a club and uh, got to meet with the engineers and took the car on the, uh, the test track, the high-speed oval in Chelsea Proving Grounds. I won't quote the speeds, but uh, we were very safe in doing it, but the car, that's really the place to enjoy the car uh, at the speed it was designed to run. You could really feel the arrow uh, kick in and hold the car to the track. And then, uh, of course, we've run uh, autocross there, but I don't race the car much, like I said. Most people that own ACRs are avid racers. Uh, this one is more of a uh, a weekend racer at times, but more of a show car and just a driver. Uh, maybe sacrilege for some of the hardcore racers, uh, but I like to keep it in good shape. So yeah, we could take a look at the engine now. I'll, we'll pop the hood on it, and uh, it's got the 8.4 liter V10. Uh, the Gen 4s had the, the ACR had the same horsepower as the standard uh, Viper. It was 600 horsepower and 560 foot-pounds of torque. But we'll go ahead and pop the hood on that now and 
take a look at it. All right, so you can take a look at the engine here. Obviously, the engine bay is very clean. Everything's stock on this car. There's been no modifications. Um, the, all the mechanicals and the bodywork are all stock. Uh, the original uh, computer is still running the stock tune, so no modifications there. And it really doesn't need them. Um, you know, a lot of people will, will modify them. That's great. That's uh, their car. They can do what they want. But I like to keep it an original uh, tune and form. Like I said, 600 horsepower. It's never lacking for horsepower, especially on the street. Uh, it has a six-speed uh, Tremec transmission. Uh, fifth and sixth gears are overdrive. Uh, it really has wide gear spacing, so I think second gear will take you up to about 115, 120 miles an hour if you really wind it out. Uh, top speed is in fifth gear, not sixth. So uh, it's really designed for uh, top speed in fifth. Sixth gear is mainly for fuel efficiency. And uh, the 2010 ACRs were unique in a couple aspects. The rear wing uh, had a, a special uh, end plates on it, and the wing was slightly redesigned to provide greater uh, downforce and a little bit better uh, drag resistance, or a little better efficiency, I should say, on the Nurburg ring. And then the fifth gear ratio was also unique to the 2010s, also primarily for the Nurburg ring on the back straight, so it could uh, be more optimized for the uh, lap time there. So other than that, the 2008s through 2010s are pretty much the same other than that rear wing and the uh, fifth gear ratio. So we'll take a look at the interior again. Uh, I guess the main unique thing about the interior is this is a final edition package. So there were 50 final editions made in total. This is number 48 of 50, so it was one of the last uh, Vipers to roll down the line. Although I did hear from an a expert that the tags necessarily don't sync with the actual uh, build date. But I'll still believe this is one of the last 48 of 50. Um, again, for ACRs, they produced 12 an ACR version. Uh, the others were Roadsters and then standard coupes. And what was unique in the interior for the final edition is you got the piano black center console, that gloss black that uh, you can see there, and then it has the red accents. So red around the uh, gauge cluster stack, the four gauges in the center. And then there's uh, red piping on the seats and on the steering wheel, which was unique to the, uh, the final edition package. And then I guess finally the red Viper logos on the backs of the seats were also unique to the final edition package. Uh, interior is not pristine right now, unfortunately. We've been driving it, but uh, but overall, the uh, rest of it's pretty much standard Viper interior. The Gen 4s were pretty basic, but that's actually what I like about the car. It's uh, really basic. It's a race car. It doesn't have a lot of frills. It does have air conditioning, as you saw, and a, and a basic stereo. But to be honest, I never listen to the stereo. I always like to listen to the engines. <laughs> so we'll take a look at the back. Uh, hatch is open. You can take a look. The wing comes up with the hatch. Um, again, the engineers designed that to take the loading of you know 1,500 pounds of downforce. So it's not a uh, it's not just for show. It's for uh, functionality. It's been engineered to take those type of loads and transfer those through the car. Um, the ACR uh, this one is not the hardcore edition. There's also a hardcore where the carpeting is removed to save I think it was another 40 pounds of weight along with the stereo system. But this one has the uh, the full interior. You can see I have the original floor mats in the back there, uh, just trying to keep them, uh, keep them neat. But uh, other than that, real basic Viper, not a lot of room, but uh, enough to put a few bags. Uh, you can put a few helmets back here, racing helmets, if you're going to the track. Uh, there's no spare tire. There's a, uh, like most modern cars now, it has the uh, tire repair kit with a pump. Um, what else is unique on this? Um, rear of the car has, you know, the diffusers underneath. That's to help with extracting the air uh, and uh, giving you the uh, positive downforce as well and extracting the air out of the back of the car. All right, so now we'll uh, start it up for you. Again, the Gen 4 Vipers have side exhaust. This has a completely stock factory exhaust system, you know, dual catalytic converters on each pipe. So there's four catalytic converters through large mufflers. So it's not a, a very loud car by uh, you know some racing standards but again completely stock uh, v10 i'll let you listen to it here 